Welcome back everyone. In the previous video, we learned about component props in Vue. We learned how to pass in both static and dynamic props. In our example, app component is the parent component which passes in the data to the child component which is the greet component. In the greet component, we specify the props option on the default export which is an array of all the props the component will accept. Although this works completely fine, often you would want to specify what type a particular prop is. For example, if someone else has coded the greet component and if I were to look at the greet component myself, I can see that it contains two props, name and hero name. However, there is no way for me to right away tell if the value of these props has to be a string or an array or an object. To help in this scenario, Vue allows us to specify the props as an object instead of an array. In the object syntax, the key is the prop name and the value is the prop type. Let's understand the syntax with an example. Let's leave the greet component as is and create a new component. In the components folder, create a file called article.view. Let's assume this component is to write articles in a blog. I'm going to use the vbase CSS snippet to add the skeleton code. Let's name this component as article. In the template, include a simple h2 tag that says article component. In the app component, import the article component. Import article from components slash article dot view. Add it to the list of components as well. And let's include the component in the template. Let's comment out the greet components as they are not required right now. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, we should see the text article component. Now that our component is working as expected, let's focus on props and specifying prop types for this article component. The first prop we are going to specify is a title for the article which would be of type string. So in the article component, add the props option to the default export. But this time, instead of specifying an array, we specify an object. Now we specify key value pairs. Key is the prop name, which is title, and the value is the prop type, which is string. Let's also bind this prop to the template. h2 tag and bind title. Let's pass in a prop in app component. So on the article tag, a custom attribute title is equal to article title. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, the title is displayed, but this time we have a documentation of sorts for our article component. Another developer can easily identify what sort of a prop value to send to the article component. Apart from the documentation, the prop type also warns the user in the browser if a wrong type is passed in as the value. Let's see that with our second prop. Now the second prop is to specify the number of likes for this article and this prop will be a number. So likes of type number. Let's bind the prop to the template. We can now pass in this likes prop in app component. So on the article component, likes is equal to 50. If you save the file and take a look at the browser, we do see the number of likes. However, if we look at the console, we have a warning. Invalid prop 
type check failed for prop likes. Expected number with value 50 got string with value 50. If we go back to the app component, we did specify a number, didn't we? Well, the problem is that the value we have specified is treated as a string. To ensure view treats 50 as a number and not a string, we need to use the vbind directive. So add the vbind shorthand, which is a colon. If you now save the file and go back to the browser, refresh, and the warning is not present anymore. Similar is the case with boolean props. Back in our article component, let's add a prop called is published, which can either be true or false. So the type is boolean. Let's bind the same to the template. h2 tag published is going to be an expression where we check is published is true, render yes, if not, render no. Now in app component, we can pass in a prop called is published. Add the vbind directive and the value is true. If we take a look at the browser, we have published as yes. If we remove the vbind directive, we get the warning expected boolean got string. So make sure to include the vbind directive if you're binding non-string values. Now what we have seen so far is a basic type check. However, it is possible to specify if a prop is required or not and also a default value for a prop. Let's quickly take a look at an example. Suppose the title prop is a required prop for the article component. Begin by changing title to an object. Here we specify key value pairs. Type is string and we also specify another key called required and set it to true. If we now remove the prop from the app component, head back to the browser, we can see another warning in the console, missing required prop title. These sort of warnings are really useful during development. Now on required props or any props for that matter, you can set a default value as well. For the title prop, Let's set default string article default title. If you now take a look at the browser, the default value is rendered. If you do specify the prop, then the default value will be ignored and the passed in value is rendered. So let's quickly check that. In app component, I'm going to add back the title prop which says article title. Go back to the browser and now we have article title instead of article default title. So you can specify default values for any prop in a component. Now we've only seen examples pertaining to string, number and boolean types. But you can also specify array, object, date and even function as a prop type. I will leave those types for you to explore. So that is pretty much about component props in view. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.